Hello and welcome to Experience Weekly Data Talk, a show featuring some of the smartest people working in data science. Today we're excited to talk with Jenna Lake, who is a computer vision engineer over at Second Spectrum. Jenna earned her master's degree, master's of science degree in computer vision from Carnegie Mellon University and a bachelor's of science degree in computer science and biometric systems at West Virginia University. Jenna, thank you so much for being part of our show today. Well, thank you for having me. So I wonder, Jenna, I always ask our guests to share a little bit about their journey, uh, what led you into data science and particularly computer vision? Well, you know, for me, I just have really had a hard time choosing. I <laughs> loved writing code. And, you know, in the struggle to find where write some cool software with um, but being a biometric systems, um, as having that as one of my majors, I actually was allowed to do a lot of image processing. And then when I graduated, I was lucky enough to work uh, with a company where I had a very supportive boss that really just pushed me into more computer vision and more kind of you know data processing techniques. And it was a really great experience that led to me getting my master's. In computer vision. That's awesome. So um, when you were in high school, were you just always really interested in maths and sciences? Is that pretty much your focus? Yes, uh, I am the founder of the Math Lunch Society at my high school. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was horrible in history. Oh, it's kind of cutting out a little bit, Jenna, but I'll try to, um, I'll try to read your lips. <laughs> but it sounded like you really, really enjoyed math and sciences in high school. Mm -hmm. You said something about uh, poetry or the humanities. You... Oh, I'm really bad at history. Oh, history. Okay. And see, I was the opposite. I, I loved reading and I loved writing, and I stayed away from math uh, when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I was complete opposite. And when I went to college, I was an English major. I just I stayed far away from engineering. I took like one computer science class. It was like, this is back in like 1999, so it was like, uh, C++, Visual Basic, and um, I just now have huge respect for anybody in the computer sciences <laughs> after that one class. <laughs> so, um, Jenna, the uh, you know computer vision is a really hot topic these days. Um, I was just reading about Google Lens uh, now allowing people to be able to take photos of an object and, it, and AI to be able to identify what that object is, like it's what type of flower. So there's a lot of really cool things that are happening in computer vision. And um, what I love about the work that you're doing is you're really active in using computer vision to help with sports analysis. And I'm wondering if you can kind of share a little bit about how you're helping computers understand basketball and the NBA. Yes, well, it's actually really interesting. Uh it's just a small So we take in a bunch of different imagery and then as we try to players and where the balls. At the end of the and here's the basketball in 3D for every frame. And then we have a completely separate team that can also go look at that and say, what does this mean? What does it mean when the basketball is here and maybe the opposite team is close to it? Are we having an offensive or defensive play that's happening? Um, and that's really something that's quite exciting because this is typically something that was done in a very manual fashion. People would just rewatch, rewatch, rewatch. Um, and you know, there's if you want to do those types of things, very you know easy to, to manner. Don't watch the entire game here, just the interesting bits you want. Are, are you hearing some feedback? Yeah, I'm hearing some feedback. And I am hearing a little bit, having some audio trouble. <laughs> I feel bummed out because you're saying something that's really fascinating and I'm like catching bits and pieces right now. Um, so uh, well, you were talking a little bit, what, what I did hear you say was um, uh, how in the past, how it's always been re-watching the same video footage over and over again. And I've definitely seen movies. I've never been involved in sports, so I can only imagine what's, what it's like inside of a locker room. 
But, you know, so when, when I see movies of like coaches with their teams rewatching plays over and over again, uh, you're now um, aiding in that process by teaching computers to understand the relationship between the players, the ball, and what's happening. Exactly. So you can since uh, focus in on maybe what you had. You said, how is this player in this position with these other people? And you can uh, watch him every and every single has been in. Instead, you can say, I would like to see the defensive moves that this person like to see is this person on the court most effective maps and say you know of this player on the court he is successful more to left than the right or he's more successful if he works with these people or those people so it's a very interesting kind of um you know way of exposing the data even more for these coaches for them to understand in even greater detail what's happening yes yeah, so is it actually like part of the data that you're examining is like how the players interact with other players? Well, we do know where every player is in every frame in 3D. We know the, yeah. where the ball is. So, you know, you could always try to, you know, out of our output that we say here, are like, you know, here are the coordinates and we can like annotate on top of it. And we can even pull out those exact timestamps when things happen. You can, you know, then query and put that together and say, you know, this is what's happening. This is my in-depth analysis of the game. And really what we try to do is enable coaches um, to do this as fast as possible, right? You know, we would love it if, you know, you could just turn it on and say, oh, that's what I wanted. Oh, that's really interesting. I haven't thought about that. Just rewatch the NBA season, you know, there are over a thousand games in the season. <laughs> I mean, granted, that's all the teams, but sometimes, you know, you need to understand how your team works or your opponents. So it's just a lot of data for humans to just manually take in. Yeah, no doubt. And I think I read on your website that you're working with, like, a th was it a third of NBA teams right now? Um, so we actually have the exclusive contract with the entire NBA um, for tracking. Um, and the kind of statistics you would see, like, maybe on a fantasy basketball site or any other site, that's generated by us. Oh, okay. Uh, very cool. Oh, very yeah, cool. In addition, we have a coaching software, and the of the uh, teams actually subscribe to um, a premium level of that software as well. That's awesome. So, you know, for for deep learning, machine learning, you need a lot of training data. And I was kind of curious about what types of basketball data you're pulling in and analyzing. Well, we are very fortunate in the fact that, you know, we have our own cameras, so we can collect what we want. Um, however, we have the same data player problems every single person has. You know, labels, 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 labels. If you want to train anything, you need to know what's happening there. And, you know, it's wonderful to have this huge amount of data, but at the end of the day, you know, we need to be able to make sense of it. And it's completely inefficient to say, oh, for a human, you know, label every single frame, every single player and the ball. I mean, that would just take forever. And so you have to kind of walk that like really fine line. I think almost everyone in you know, machine learning, computer vision has to do right now is to understand, you know, how can I train a model in an effective manner with you know, some data or how can I, what data is most important to represent? Because you also want to represent you know, your normal cases as well as your edge cases effectively. Now, uh, one of our one of our comments just came in about why the focus is on NBA, and that's because uh, basketball is just starting up, so we're really excited about NBA. But obviously, the work that you're doing expands beyond basketball, right? Yes, I'm working with um, some soccer teams in the MLS, um, so that's been very exciting, and um, it's really interesting to see the differences in the sports. Um, just very simple things like uh, in basketball, you play indoors, but you know. MLS, all outdoors. So suddenly now we have, you know, all those things like, you know, it's, it's no longer, you know, laboratories indoors. We have, you know, <laughs> weather, you have, you know, time shift of the day. You know, you can just imagine how that's so different. And not only that, but suddenly you have a very different number of people you need to track on the field. So it's just like a very interesting and exciting time for us. 
Yeah, no doubt. That is so cool. And um, yeah, you're, you're doing, you guys do analysis of soccer, the National Hockey League. Uh, so it's amazing the amount of video footage you guys must be analyzing and sensor data that you must be, must be pulling in. Yeah, so we primarily work with the NBA and we do do some MLS as well. Um, and it's just, it's, it's really interesting because I, sometimes I talk about this with uh, people and they say, do you just watch? <laughs> I was like, well, yes, but I think of it in a very different way than someone else <laughs> watching it. Yeah, I imagine, I imagine it must be really funny, like, sitting down watching the Super Bowl with you because you're probably watching the game in a completely different way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm kind of uh, curious about what sorts of models do you work with or models that you build to help you identify basketball players and how they're performing? Yeah, so, um, so we do have a number of different models. Of course, we need to have models for, you know, the players. Right. And, you know, we're very lucky in sports that unlike, when, you know, faces in the wild, people wear jerseys with their names on them, their <laughs> colors and numbers. Um, but, you know, that itself has its own challenges. You can, you know, you could imagine that if you have two of the same number on the court, you know, that's a little bit different. But what if you have some numbers that kind of look this? Yeah. Hard for us to work for computer as well. Um, and models for the ball that we're looking at. Um, and so in all of this, um, I think the one really interesting thing that you, like people have to realize doing this in sports is that nobody will know and have time to say, well, we wish we could talk about this, but the you know, statistics, they're going to take another half hour. You know? So it needs to be practical. You have to say, okay, I can understand what each of these individual people are. I know exactly who they are, and I know where the ball is. And it will do that in a like a an efficient manner so that it actually can be consumed and used by the people both, you know, on and off the court. You know, maybe it's a sports broadcast or maybe you're just sitting at home and you're like, oh man, fantasy basketball all the time. Um, but yeah, it's a really hard challenge, but a really exciting one at the same time. I mean, it must be really exciting for the coaches to have so much more data to pull from than just what they're seeing on the court or wherever they're at. I think one is that we're we're enabling for their job. The fun part of their job is not sitting and watching the same like you know footage reel four times. Their exciting thing is like, aha, I see this is going on. Oh, do we change this now? Or do we improve on this? Or, you know, I see that this player, he's doing, you know, these really hard, you know, shots. And he's succeeding some of the time. And then I maybe have another player, he just does all the really easy ones all day long, right? Yeah. Which one's better? the numbers that he gets them done all the time he's better to look at that and qualify that and kind of do that and you know what is more important for my team right now or in the future so i'm kind of curious jenna are you are you playing fantasy basketball <laughs> oh yes i don't feel like you'd be dominating <laughs> Uh, we have some people in the office who are extremely serious about it. The bracket is very intense. <laughs> uh, can you share a little bit about um, different ways that NBA coaches and teams could be using your data in real time, either before, after, or during the game? Yeah, so I mean, okay, I'm... I'm a certain team, I'm going to face a very hard team that we've had a really, you know, it's been neck and neck. You know, you can think about, you know, when we had the playoffs, you know, how are they strategizing? And so one thing you could do is you can compare kind of the strengths and talents of your own team as well as that team. And you could always look at kind of the games where you've previously seen, oh, this is where we collapsed. This is where, you know, we really uh, succeeded. And, you know, that's a really interesting thing on just the strategy level. Um, but if you look deeper than that, you know, we can talk about this with like, you know, trades and free agency, right? I know a lot of things happen in the off season, the NBA with this. And, you know, they have the tools in place to say, I know this is what my team has, um, but this is what my team needs. And who do I look for for that? I think that's just like a really interesting thing that I secretly hope for is that, you know, when these things happen, that somebody had just sat at the computer 
secret and looked at our software and said, that's the secret society, you know? Um, so I think that's a really cool thing. Um, okay. Another really cool application that's kind of on the forefront that we're working on um, is we're looking at bringing a, uh, you know, fastness to people. So what we're planning on doing, and this is, uh, it's been spoken about at, you know, Recode uh, by Steve Fulmer, um, is, you know, we're all different. We all have different needs when we watch sports. Is there a way I can augment sports for you that makes it more enjoyable or more way that um, and so we're looking at all these different ways of how we can let's customize this viewing experience you know maybe you want to really impress your friends in your fantasy basketball league is there a way that we can show some of our things to you and you can say huh I learned something new today or is there a way that you can say is this I think that's really exciting that you know, coaches, and now we're starting to do it in the living room. Yeah, that's super cool. And I'm just like, you know, thinking about the future, how, you know, just in the last year, we're seeing leaps and bounds with virtual reality and watching possibly sports in the future in virtual reality where we can be down on the court, you know, possibly watching a game and then overlaying it with like data that you guys provide over the players that we're interested in, that would just be phenomenal uh, to be able to have access to that in real time. So this is very, very exciting for anybody who's a sports fan uh, or into virtual reality um, because the data that you guys are providing in real time is just fascinating and uh, definitely going to be helping improve uh, coaches and teams as they make their decisions. So I'm kind of curious about, Jenna, what are some of the biggest challenges you notice right now for those working in computer vision? You know, I think computer vision, you always have this like curse now. <laughs> you can look at so many things, but it's slow, you know? You could sit there and we're like, we could look at everything that ever happens. We come with this, you know, really interesting analysis, but we wait four weeks for it. If that's what you need, <laughs> predictions of storms in 20 years and even you know spare four weeks um but you know i think we're all running into this like real kind of performance barrier how do we make this accessible and useful because you know i think everything when it comes to data there's like an expiration date on it you know if a company can friend if you're like are you working with you know uh stock trading you know you want to know what's happening soon you don't want to know what's happening you know after it's happened. I used to work with detecting um, IEDs for the military. Nobody wants to know they ran over an IED 10 minutes ago because they, you know, they've mm -hmm. run over at this point. Um, and so it's really interesting. How do we balance performance and how do we balance accuracy? Because that's usually the tree off we have to play. Uh, you know, can I give you something really, really fast? But is the result good enough? And is that something we care about? Um, and so I think you know, overall computer vision, that's really something we're tackling. And what I really liked that when I went to uh, the big computer vision conference, CDPR, I saw some research that's actually starting to um, You can see this in pretty much all facets of the industry that you deal with computer vision. Now is, you know, coming out with GPUs that are optimized for these kinds of, uh, you know, uh, processing techniques and things like that. Um, you can see there's a real shift in the entire industry and academia that we're saying, okay, what we thought wasn't possible is now possible. How do we make it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's just amazing to see all the growth that's happening in computer, computer vision. And, um, you know, when I originally thought about computer vision, I was thinking about automobiles. I think that's the first very very first time I heard about it with like Google developing a self-driving car and how computer vision was helping that car navigate and recognizing is that a piece of wood in the road or is that a paper bag? Like there's so many technicalities to computer vision, but it's so cool to see how it's now being related to help uh, help with sports, help help with teams, make better decisions and um so I'm, I'm just very, very impressed by the work that you're doing. Also curious about, 
you know, you shared some of the challenges with computer vision. Uh, what are some of the most impressive applications that you've seen with computer vision and where do you see things headed? Well, that's a good question. So, I mean, of course, I do here is very cool. Uh, but other than that, other things have just been like, whoa, I haven't thought about that before. And, you know, I hate to say it, everyone's working on a self driving car, everyone's working on VR, and it all, is all very cool. But I have some, um, some actually, like, you know, very novel things that I've seen. I've been like, wait, what? <laughs> um, so when I was at CMU, I was lucky enough uh, to be uh, working in the illumination and imaging laboratory. And in there, they're working on a smart headlight. So if you imagine, you could drive with your high beams on all the time and not worry about blinding anyone. And so oh. they have the ability to turn off uh, part of the headlight, and so it won't blind the driving. I just oh. thought that was the coolest one who uh, you know, grew up on the East Coast where it's, um, I thought that was just brilliant. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's great. Um, there are also things where they can turn off um, the light in those uh, pixels or areas uh, where there's a lot of reflections from like rain or snow. Layer back from that. Oh. I thought that was um, interesting and novel application. I thought of computer vision that I've seen recently um, actually comes out of MIT, and uh, they were able to see subtle changes in color in your face uh, that you can barely see with the human eye or heart rate from a regular webcam video. What? Yes. That's it crazy. Is, yeah, it, it's so weird, and the, they'll they'll uh, they'll dial up uh, and actually see it, and people's faces. It's red, white, red, white, red, white. It's the weirdest thing, but it works. Um, when I was in school, I was like, I have to make sure this works for real. And so, <laughs> so I put it and played around with it. It's, it's, it's one of those things that, like, it shouldn't make sense, but it does. It's just so interesting. Um, and, and I have to say one thing that's, I think, really interesting with this, like, e of, like, great computer vision and machine learning that we have. You know, I personally, I'm a computer vision person. I live to make dots and you know, rectangles and bounding boxes and <laughs> segmentation of things on images. But I will be the first one to say that my output looks hideous. It looks horrible. <laughs> um, and it's a lot of data. You think about, oh, my God, we're, we're increasing the orders of magnitude of what you see, right? Usually, you know, say basketball, for, uh, for instance, you know, we're used to saying, oh, that's the guy with the ball over there, and then, you know, that's all we care about. Yeah. Suddenly now, for every single frame, every single player, <laughs> you know, the, how do we distill this down and say that we can use this? And I think that's such a um, And I am forever grateful for uh, the great, you know, user experience people and the creative people and the full stack engineers who actually think about this every day. Um, because I think that is really impressive. How do you take you know, my dots and these like, you know, outputs and do you make them so many people can use? I'm just always impressed by that kind of thing. Wow, well, it's, it's, I mean, it's super impressive of what you're able to do uh, to get that data over to those various scientists uh, to help making help make it more meaningful. But for you, it's like you not only are part of creating the models and finding what's important, but also you also need to have a, a good understanding of, of the game. And um, so it's just, you know, your work is fascinating and very, very cool to see the developments happening in your space. Uh, so I wanted to find out, uh, you know, there are a lot of data scientists in our community um, that are looking at getting into computer vision. There's also people who are thinking about, you know, they're currently students now in high school or college, and they're thinking about pursuing a degree in data science. And I was wondering if you have any advice for them. Yes. Um, so I have two bits of advice that I've gotten from, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Alex. Um, so I have two bits of advice for people that I've gotten from my professors and my, you know, bosses in the past as well. Um, first thing is stay curious. Um, you know, I got into computer vision by basically asking if, like, hey, you've mapped over there. Can I play with that for a while? <laughs> um, I also got into GP, uh, GP programming which is general person, purpose uh, GPU programming. I got into that by basically saying, you know, I know that guy 
that's what used to do that to you. And I start doing that. And they were like, oh, no, sure, why not? You know, so stay curious. Um, you know, get yourself, you know, into things that you think are exciting and interesting. Um, and then secondly, this has been a really hard thing I think that most people struggle with. Prepare to try lots of things and fail most of the time. You know, whether you're doing machine learning or even you know, software engineering, I mean, most things in life, you will try to do things 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 times, and you will fail. But there'll be that one time that you say, hey, this actually works. That's great. So don't be afraid to fail. That's completely normal. And um, I've been very lucky to have talked to some of the, the greats in computer vision while I was at CMU. And that's the same thing they said. You know, I failed all the time, but nobody will remember that. They'll just remember the times that I actually succeeded. And I think that's a great bit of advice to take. Um, because it's very easy to beat yourself up about it, you know? Yeah, I love that. That's wonderful advice. That's wonderful advice. I hear a little echo. Uh, I hear a little echo. Uh, so one last question. There's a lot of debate about which, if for somebody who's just getting into data, data science, which program to learn first. Right now I'm seeing that Python is considered like the language to learn. I was wondering if you have any advice for those just breaking in for a language to start with. So I would personally go with something that interests you, okay? The thing that's going to keep you learning in it. So if you wake up in the morning and you said, hey, I, I am so interested in, you know, embedded systems. You know, I think it's so cool. I'm one of those people, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run for the hills for C++, right? I'm just going to be like, this is awesome. Um, but if you're a person, you're like, hey, I have this book, and they talk about this really cool library, and I want to learn how to do computer vision or machine learning. Go use it, you know? Whether it's, you know, some outdated language that you just think is really funky and weird and you'd love to learn, whether it's something new and fresh people here in the office, people are really into Elm. You know, if you're excited about it, go learn it. Hmm. There's really no wrong language to go into because the secret is once you learn one language, it's very easy to learn another language. And then when you've learned two, it's really easy to go, you know, learn a third. Um, and so just kind of invest your time in what interests you. And, um, you know, if you're really stuck, I want C++ and Python, or I want Java and C, you know, for some examples. Go with the one you, you would say, I want a job in this, and what would they want? Uh, but I would say that's your secondary concern. Go with what you would say. Love that. Alex, put that on the screen. If you're excited about it, go learn it. I love this, that advice. So, uh, Jenna, thank you so much for your time today. Where can everyone learn more about you? Oh, uh, well, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, it is linked on the, uh, on the site. So, if you want to learn more about Second Spectrum, uh, we put out um, and looking especially for interns, if you guys are excited about machine learning or computer, for that. Awesome, thank you so much. And we'll make sure to put links in the about section of the YouTube video, as well as in the comment section of the Facebook Live video. So Jenna, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us and share your insights with us about computer vision. And I wanna thank everyone for watching, for all your hearts, for all your comments. And we'll talk with you all next week. Jenna, thank you again. Thank you so much, Mike. It's been great. Great. Take care. Thanks.